Now we're going to talk about capacitive touch. It's actually a really cool technology that I like to integrate into many of my projects. So what is it? Well, basically, we're going to use the Arduino to take a reading of the capacitance or almost the electrical energy of the air. And anything different than that energy or whatever it's connected to, it will be able to sense that. I know that can sound a little complicated right now, but it's actually very easy. In the past, we used multiple resistors and some foil or copper tape to create a button, but it's actually even easier now using a library that I'm gonna show you in just a bit. But before we do that, I wanted to share with you some of these really neat breakout boards from Adafruit. These are capacitive touch standalone units. So this one has five pins that you can connect a power supply to and you can have a standalone capacitive touch switch. Why would I wanna do that? Well, let's just say you had a toy that you wanted to touch and the LED comes on. We might as well use something like this because all I have to do is connect that battery to here. There's even a built-in LED or I can wire up my own LED. And whenever I touch this plate or anything connected to this plate that's metallic or conductive, it will turn on and off. Now they have latching ones, so I can touch it and stays on, touch it and turns off. They have momentary ones where I can just touch them and it goes on and off. They're very cool. They're nice for standalone projects, minimal amount of electronics, but we're gonna use the Arduino because that's what this video series is all about. So all you need is an Arduino and to start out with any kind of wire or something conductive. So we'll start by looking at the library. I'll open up my Arduino and I've already installed this library, but I'm going to walk you through how to do it. The only difference is yours will have an, a, a button that says install and mine does not. It's not really a big deal. So to use the capacitive touch library, we need to go to sketch, include library, manage libraries. You can type in ADC touch. And in my case, it's already installed In yours, you can have the type all and it will show up. And the only difference was you will have a little button right here that says install. Go ahead and click install and restart your Arduino IDE. You can also click on the more info button right here and that will open up the webpage to the GitHub repository. It has some really interesting notes here, reading about how it works and how you can modify it. It also has the source code and every, everything else that you'll need. But we're not gonna look at that right now. And I've already restarted mine and we'll go to File, Examples, ADC Touch, Buttons. We're not gonna walk through the whole code, but I'm gonna explain how it works. It's really easy to modify, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking a reading of analog pin zero and one, and we're going to store that information. And if there's any difference in the capacitive nature of those two pins, we're gonna report it. Now this will make a lot more sense once I upload the code. So I'll quickly hit verify. I'm gonna plug my Arduino in, make sure that I have the right board, which I do, and port, not yet. And there's the port. Sometimes you have to click on that twice. And now I can upload it. We can see the two buttons going. And not much happens. What you need to do is open up the serial monitor and you can see there's four columns. So column one and two are analog pin zero and one. And that is either a zero or a one. That's saying whether it senses a touch or not. Columns three and four are the same as columns one and two, but they're actually giving you the readings. And you're gonna see them fluctuate quite a bit. Right now they're only fluctuating by one or two, but if I even put my hand kind of close to the pins, I probably can get them to fluctuate even more there, two, three. Now what I want you to do is take any old wire anything, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use a jumper wire right here. I'm gonna plug it into analog zero. And you'll notice that the readings start jumping around a little bit. Now here's the trick with capacitive touch. I told you it, it takes the reading from when the Arduino starts up. So anytime you change anything, go ahead and hit reset. And when I hit reset, you'll see once again, those numbers are all around zero. But if I even touch the wire, you see column one turns to one, that's telling you that it senses a touch. And column three is how much of a touch. It's like 53. If I go ahead and touch the bare metal, it should go up even more. There you go, 200. So it's sensing whether I touched it or not without a button. Now there's some drawbacks, right? If you have a device, this is going to be not as accurate as a typical button press. 
because if I, if I want very precise control, it's going to take a reading all around wherever this wire is. So maybe I don't want to touch this close and it's starting to sense it. Now, why do we look at the values in that column three? That's so that we can take a value of zero to right now I'm getting about 380 and I can write in my code what a trigger point would be. Maybe I want it to be a really close touch before it triggers a one. So why do I like capacitive touch? Well, I think it's a really elegant user interface when prototyping. Say you have a 3D printed enclosure and you really just want the user to be able to touch it. Maybe we're controlling a camera or something and just the touch triggers a shutter, for example. Well, this can sense my finger that's conductive through a non-conductive material. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's just say I took this pin and with just a little bit of tape, any old tape, not even conductive tape, doesn't really matter. You can tape it to this tin foil. And I'm gonna put a piece of wood over it. Now I'm gonna to have to hit reset. Now we go over here and let's take a look at these readings. I'm getting zero, zero, about negative one and zero. Now watch this, if I put my finger on the wood and I can actually trigger this now. So imagine this was hidden in a wooden box. I could actually go up to it and touch it and interact with it. So think about how you might use this in your next project. It works really well with 3D printed enclosures because they're non-conductive and you could hide a little piece of copper tape underneath a piece of plastic. And when your finger touches that area, it will signal a high or a low, however you code it up.